I'm Phil Liggett, and this is The Wheelhouse. <laughs> Welcome to The Wheelhouse Podcast. It's lovely to be in the bunker, secret location, time of day not revealed. My name's Joel Spreadborough. Kate Bates, hello. Hello. How good does the bunker look? The bunker is Can looking exquisite. It, it really is. is. And I, I have to say that with each week, Merksy does a better job of giving us some beautiful set yeah. decorations. But um, this week we have got episode, no, episode, issue 116 of Roller Magazine. Yep. It is beautiful. Oh, I think I've forgotten what it's like to sift through a, a beautiful... hard copy magazine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, the, geez, the guys at Rollo do an amazing job. There's this fantastic feature of one of our favourites, Rupert Guinness, in there yep. as well. Uh, <laughs> and I also just have to say there's a fella named Fergus Crawley and he's pictured on his bike but he's also pictured in a kilt lifting a very heavy rock. I do not know what that article is about but I am now... More motivated to read it than I previously was. Okay. Um, to Kilt figure out rock what lifting. that is. <laughs> it's, yes. It's big in Scotland, I yes, think. Yes, but we, we do appreciate all of the uh, additions to the set in here. It makes us uh, smile coming into the bunker because it looks beautiful. So welcome, it Rollo does. Magazine, because it's a very stylish. Stylish. It Speaking is. Speaking of stylish, there's so much <laughs> coming up on the Wheelhouse podcast today. Coming to you from the bunker, some classic action in the classics, I know you're excited to tackle them because you just love them. You love them. I do. Uh, I love Pog. talking about them. It wasn't pleasant <laughs> to write them. No, no, that's okay. Uh, Pog has been doing his best Pac-Man impression. Some cracks appear for cousin Jonas Vingegaard. We're going to talk about that a little so bit. So you say. A bit of colourful language, a bit of stylish language between uh, some teammates in the women's peloton. Photo finish drama, which I just love. That low res photo finish drama we're going to talk about this week. <laughs> and why does Julian Alaphilippe seem just a tiny little bit creeped out by a giant tattoo? We're going to find out, hopefully, a little bit later on. But before anything else, I just want to say quickly, uh, a special episode of The Wheelhouse, an International Women's Day special, but just a special, special. Your chat with Imogen Alton was really, really lovely. Oh, thank you, Joel. She's a pretty special young lady and... You know, I think I saw a lot of quite funny headlines on International Women's Day around, you know, you can shove your cupcake mm -hmm. kind of thing. Just talking about how we don't want platitudes. And Tokenistic we don't want rubbish. Yep. Cupcakes. We don't want to be asked to come and speak for free yeah. on International Women's Day. Um, but sitting down with someone like Imogen, she's only 25 years of age. She's already been to hell and back. Mm. And just her attitude, her resilience, I think... It's a tough one to listen to, requires some uh, tissues along the way, but it also leaves you feeling brave and, and courageous and strong. So, yeah, if you haven't had a listen to that, please do take a listen yep. um, and throw your support behind that. Yeah, really great special, very authentic, and speaking about some overcoming some incredible challenges. So thank you, Imogen, if you're, if you're watching and listening, which I'm sure you are. You're now part oh, of the family. Oh, yeah, so she's – I will huge. send her the link and – monitor yeah. when she clicks on it <laughs> good <laughs> and hold her to account if exactly, she doesn't yes. let's go to Parry Nice on the wheelhouse podcast so I love the way we write our notes in here uh we, we write little sort of this is what we're going to talk mm. about and what we've written here is you know but let's lift the veil we've written Jonas bonked mm. pog kills it yes and that's kind of what <laughs> happened isn't it well and and then we write our own <laughs> sub notes yes and I think pog has been pogging and Jonas has been just having a little bit of fun. You know what I wrote? Pog again plays Pac-Man with the Peloton. Oh, you like alliteration, don't you? Yeah, Pog, Pac-Man, Peloton. P because he just eats them up. Perfectly. He eats them up. It's ridiculous. Pog, Pac-Man perfectly. Well, he did. I mean, it. We've. this is like the showdown we've been waiting for. Yeah. And on last week's show, I grilled Hank Vogels, uh, who was sitting in your seat. Another great episode. Sorry, thank you. Um, yes. And I'm glad you're healthy. I'm back. I've, I've spoken to you between then and now and forgot to say that. I'm glad you're healthy. And Thanks you're back. for saying it on air. But I yeah. appreciate it. That's <laughs> yes. great. So everyone knows. But <laughs> Hank said, whatever, like whatever happens at Parry Nice, yeah. it's, you know, doesn't really indicate anything for the tour. Yeah. But people will talk about it. Of course and they will. Here we are. It's like he's a savant. Here we are talking about it. Because, you know, I think it was an interesting race. Like mm. this is like a rivalry for a lifetime. Oh, big this time. This will big define time. years of our sport, I hope. Yeah. Uh, and for Pog, I reckon he's playing a little bit with his ego. As in, he still is carries 
a bit of ugh, from the tour last year because mm-hmm. he didn't think he'd get beaten. Mm-hmm. And he's getting on his bike every time trying to prove something to himself and this one meant a lot. But I don't reckon Jonas, cousin Jonas, has the same mindset. Oh, that's it. I'm, I'm interested to hear what you what you're meaning by that because obviously Lombardia sort of he he got one over him at the end of last year he's come out starting a new year a new tour year and he's done it pretty emphatically uh, well both of them have right <laughs> like they've <laughs> they've both that was like a winnie you did there with that there's a reason for that uh, that's a tease they are race horses yeah. i'll give you, i'll give you that i think that Jonas is more just going through the motions okay. preparing very fastidiously he made a few mistakes, yeah. But now's when you make the mistakes. He now he learns from that. The team learns from that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't I think just, there's. I mean, I love talking about it. I think we're going to keep talking about it. Well, but. serious mind games, and 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 the quote I love from Pog is there's a t-shirt quote here is you don't say no to yellow, and it's good to be back. On from there, saying yeah, I think. Look, yeah, not the best day for him. He made some mistakes, and he might mm. have cracked. Ooh. That's fighting words fighting massively. Words. And and look, can I say for people, you know, with a skin tone like mine, I do often say you no know, to yellow. But I suppose there is a context in that <laughs> comment. And you that rejected t-shirt. a wheelhouse yellow wheelhouse shirts out, straight Just out of the straight box. Straight out. I, I did. Wanna, no, yeah. look, I I think that Pog has shown a real tenacity that he hasn't necessarily had to show before. Like we've always thought that he was an exciting rider and he's been entertaining, but he never really lost for us to see what he was like Mm. kind of fighting back, if you will. It's not that dramatic given that he's won a number of races between then and now, but I think for him it is. I think for him it's pretty significant and he just needed to make sure he was able to distance Jonas on a climb and prove it to himself. And prove it to the world. Yeah, and I don't even know that he cares too much about yeah, the world. Okay. I think it, this is quite a – I think they both paddle their own canoes and they're, you know, kind of rafting down. I'm using a lot of mixed metaphors here. Yeah. They're rafting down the Nile yeah, okay. at their own speeds. But, it, you know, they'll they'll get to that start gate together and then, then it'll count. You never know what will happen. Yeah, I mean, a, again, I, I – Pog's just so entertaining to watch. Oh, he is. Isn't he? But that's I just I think body language is massive in any sport. And and when 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 Jonas is attacking with four Ks to go, Pog's literally waving to the camera. He and does, saying, he's hey, cheeky, <laughs> isn't he? Good to see you, Brian. You know, like that's Good that's to... huge. If you're watching that back, you're like, oh, Jesus, I'm really bashing my guts. Do you reckon out there's here. a lot he's... of Brian's in Slovenia? I've I've thrown Brian out there. I really did. G'day, Brian, g'day, Bruce. David. Probably uh, not. Probably Alan. none of those names. Uh <laughs> Interesting though, and like to you know, does that does it for fun? Eats up Jonas. Jonas cracks. Eats up Gordu. Does it? Does the business? Has the tuft of hair? Has a cheeky smile? There's a lot in that. There's a lot of where it's early, but look at mm. this, and it's a big race. Come on, let's be fair. It, oh, it is a big race. Race to the sun. A very big race. Jonas not coming to your Christmas party, missing the the beef on offer and the protein on offer that day is it now was good costing chicken. him. Uh, you know, it was very good chicken, and thank you for recognising that. I said Even beef, though I didn't yeah. save you any. Oh no, there was beef too. There was all <laughs> the meat. Joel. Okay, cool. All the meat. Um. I just think they're on different journeys, you know. We know that Jonas struggled a bit last year. He yeah. came out and he said that after the tour. Uh, he was, you know, a bit of a donkey, not a racehorse in Lombardia. Yep. I don't know that that surprised anybody. It was just good to see him back racing. Yep. Um, but he showed in Grand Canaria that he's – Grand Camino, pardon me – that he's confident, he's fit. Yep. He's on the path. And he's 43 seconds faster than – yeah. Jonas. Oh, sorry, Pog is 43 seconds faster. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're really like putting investment into this. I am. Okay. I really am. I'm not. But it's a yardstick. But I am happy for us to, I was going to say agree to disagree. No, I'm happy for us to continue this for the next four months and see who comes out on top in the end of July. What I do want to Because you're very introduce... clearly Team Pog. Well, I... He's a terminator. He's a terminator. A dominator. And he's a true terminator. And what, what we have been talking about a lot recently on this program and the cycling world in general is, oh, we're a little bit worried that Pog is a bit too dominant and the sport is at risk of becoming a little bit tedious and a little bit boring when all we're watching is him. And, I've, you know, I've said about that. I was like, I kind of like a champion. I kind of like a dominant champion. 
Having said that, I like a neck and neck rivalry that can give us ten years of absolute gold, and that that's this. And I'm like, this was a this was a yardstick. This is a big a big race, as you say. Well, didn't the, happen. The tour is special because everybody is there. Yeah, and it's like the Olympics, especially for track cycling. Everybody's there. Yeah, throughout the season, they're all going in different directions. So right now, we've got this mob at Paris Nice. We've got another cohort over at Terreno Adriatico. Mm-hmm. They're not all racing together. It changes when they all do come together. When they come together. And I do think that it won't just be Podge and Vinga go there. I think that we are going to have a far broader field of contenders. You've got your Pidcocks. I mean, let's not forget our own Glutes O'Connor. A hundred percent. I'm so glad you got Glutesy in there. Jai Hindley. Like, yeah. there is so many people that will provide a real challenge that over the years, the last couple of years, they've all been building up form. Now, are they necessarily a GC threat to either of them? I'm not sure I'd go that far, but could they change, completely change the dynamics of the race and the teams by attacking and chasing stages? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And so I do think they just need to focus on their own stuff and get there in great form. And Okay. So we're not reading too much we'll into decide. it. I'm not. You are. But I think that's there's fine. a lot, a like lot in words, and the fact <laughs> is, that, yeah. Look, he might have cracked a little bit. If I'm Jonas, I'm going. How dare you tell me when I crack? Okay. Maybe I just decided on that day I couldn't be asked. Don't you say I cracked? <laughs> Don't you say I cracked? Well, I think we'll I, see. I think he he acknowledged that he did, but I like where you've taken that. It's like, he acknowledges it. Don't <laughs> yeah. you tell him he's done it? He, yes. It's like I, I yes I I want to say that I cracked anyway. Okay, I I saw a lovely moment. Now this is a lovely bit of parental concern oh, that yes. I wanted to mention because Josh Josh Tarling like you know rapid rapid doing some. So Some talented. hectic descents. And and his dad's come out and said, I just can't stand it. I can't bear to watch well, the poor kid. <laughs> I, I love I, that. I want to give a shout. And yeah. I, I think that we do need to find a new term for shout out, Joel, because we are a bit... Um, Wheels you know, out. A wheel we out? We do that. Oh, no, we'll work on that. Yeah, that um, but to Michael Tarling. So Josh Tarling has joined the World Tour this year. Incredibly talented young Brit. And I think the parents get left behind, Joel. People forget, and he's written on Twitter, I saw it, new fear unlocked. <laughs> Turns out watching your son descend at the head of a world to a peloton on a damp, twisty road is very, very stressful. Two varies. <laughs> a real heart stopper. And it just made me laugh because my mum has told me so many moments where she's literally turned her back inside the velodrome because she can't watch anymore. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, Bradley McGee, one of our most successful Olympians in cycling, um, on the track, his mother was known for standing up and facing with her back to the track because she just couldn't Couldn't watch. Couldn't watch. And and so I do think that there needs to be a guidebook for the parents of athletes joining the World Tour or maybe a support group or something. Um, I think a wheelhouse but, special, um, maybe. And I, when you know, speaking of notes that we wrote down, I didn't write down Michael Tarling. I wrote down Father Michael. Father Michael. So, <laughs> henceforth, Father Michael, we are sending you our thoughts. Yes. And um, perhaps some mindful meditation or something before you turn the TV on and, and watch your Good boy on race. For, for, like, cause you've said it, Imogen said it last week too, the, the role that parents play in getting you there and supporting you over the years and then watching you uh, like it's, it's worth acknowledging. It so is. good on him for doing Look it. Look after and, your heart health, Father yeah. Michael, and uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned Tom Pidcock earlier, a, a contender across the board. Have we got a nickname for more. him yet? Because when you say Tom Pidcock in my head, automatically I say piddles and I don't think that's a good one. I think of a peacock. Peacock. So maybe feathers. Oh, feathers. Because he's like quite that. light too. He's quite feathers light on the bike. Feathers is better than piddles. <laughs> well, he looked quite light going down the descents at Strata Bianchi. And I think that, I, you know, I think I Yikes. feel like I say to you this all the time. You're like, yeah, good on you, darling. Yeah, yeah, good on you. But I say, look, I'm starting to go down hills and I feel like I'm getting okay at the descents. He puts me firmly back in his place. Uh, he's like, I, I felt You know, good. I'm really proud of your growth through the sport, Joel. Thank you. I'm not sure I'd yet be not quite up to Pitcock comparing standard. you to feathers, but um you one know day, uh, one day. Yeah. Um, Look, he, he like forgets about safety concerns. He forgets mm. 
people like Father Michael are watching and he just <laughs> hurls himself down. It's He's pretty incredible to watch. And that's such a cool race. Yeah, it is. The white gravel roads, so yeah. romantic. So hectic, so hectic. Uh, you, <laughs> you say hectic, I say romantic. Yeah, but well, we meet in the middle somewhere there. High drama. Now, can you just hold your horses for just a second? Because I want to just point out something that's happened in the women's race. We're going to get into some of the human drama around the women's race. But before that, a little bit of horse-powered hijinks. Now, this was... This was fascinating. Um, yay or nay to horses on track? What do you think? Nay. No. <laughs> Not a fan? Not a fan. The poor horse. The, the poor horse? Yeah. Why is it a why? Way? Hold on. Why the poor horse? He, I... he ran out on course in front of Demi Vollering, who you couldn't really, because of the horse, the camera was catching the horse and it was a bit hard to see Vollering's facial expressions. But I reckon she was probably thinking, you know, come on, mate, just rein it in. Let oh, me get there. to the finish. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, oh, wow. you're stirruping some trouble. Stirruping up some drama. Yeah, oh, yeah. something like, yes. But, you know, the horse wasn't the main event. No, it wasn't the main event. And this Demi was like, like the horse was kind of lucky when it came to Demi Vollering's wrath that day because it went somewhere it else. It was. But, but I, we don't have footage of it. Yeah. But I did see somewhere that the horse stacked. Had a stack, yeah. I thought horses were very good on their feet and I did not expect that. They're I have to say, I did not expect yeah. the, the horse to stack it before Demi Vollering stacked it because of the horse. But I think that's why I said poor horse, knowledge of the horse yes. stack. And it's like, that can often be quite bleak for horses. Yes, but, but I think the horse is okay. And he got out of the way and the race went on. They galloped on. I, we, galloped we, see, on. we see a lot of animals, don't we? We mm. see, um, you know... Everything but horses. Now we've seen a horse as well, but I've seen rabbits, donkeys, seen donkeys, and dogs, dogs, lots of mm, dogs, lots of dogs. And uh, now we have a new entry. But let's talk about the drama in the women's race because the SD Works sprint for the win. Um, one of the great bike throws by Demi Vollering. She she edges out Lotta Kopecky, speaks to journalists, says, "Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm home." Uh, sorry, the journalist says to her, "You got home." Before that happened, though, she wasn't one hundred percent sure she had got home. And some colourful language was allegedly exchanged. Now, can I ask mm. you, you know of such things with your, with your potty mouth and whatnot. No, <laughs> with your experience in Europe, you know of such things. And I want to I want to ask if you can tell me what the K word is. No. You don't want to say it? No. Is it that nasty? Yes. So she I will said not an, say an it. effing K word. Yes, uh, I, I, won't, will I, won't not, say I will not say it. It's a very derogatory term for a woman. Okay, so it it's a very nasty slur. It will not come out slow. of my mouth. No, that's yes. fine. That's fine. Um, so. It is not something I've lived in Holland. I've raced I raced in Dutch teams for yep. a, lot, a large part of my career. And they have afterwards come out and said that, you know, that was a, just a friendly little comment. Uh-huh. I do not see a way you could say that in a friendly way. And I have not heard... Dutch people, Dutch riders, none of the women I used to race with. I've never heard anybody say it in a friendly or joking way. Okay, so you have heard it, but it was always in a very nasty, yes. I'm angry. And, you know, okay. Australians, we're really good yeah. at using insults in lighthearted ways. Yeah. You know, like your mole, your whatever. Like, it's not that uncommon. But that's actually pretty unique to Australian vernacular. It is. And the Brits do it a little bit, but not even as much as the Australians do it. I don't think it translates to any European language I've heard. Right. Okay. So with that context, I think there's some beef uh, there. I, and, you know, I don't know. I, I reckon Demi Vollering probably needs to get off her high horse, Joel. Oh, <laughs> wow. You're back in the saddle already. <laughs> I, no, look, it's interesting. I, I'm, thank you for that, that context because I was wondering about that because she's also said, I know you're a killer. But couldn't Whoa, we have celebrated gee, this together? It's like, look, this is all before you realise you've won won the race. Isn't with the... killer a pretty hard word as well? I don't like. Is it? I don't know. Like again, like I'm going Ooh. in this Australian context, and you spoke, of, you you explained that beautifully. It's so true. If mm. we say stuff like that, it's like, mate, you're a killer. You're awesome at football or golf or whatever. Not in this mm, context, though. Context, at context, all. no. So what's happened is they've come to the finish together, uh, and they've raced it out. Team instructions is there's no instructions. May the best woe man. Have at it. Yeah. Right, have at it. Demi Vollering has gone over the last part in front of Kapeki before they drop down to the finish line. And her comments seem to echo that she believes because she got 
to that downhill section first, mm. she believes she should have been left to win. So it shouldn't have required a bike shouldn't throw have re- to get over. Well, shouldn't have required the like the essentially that the finish line wasn't the finish line. Yeah. If if it sounds confusing explaining it, it's because it's so weird. I have never heard of a professional athlete who is, to use her words, a killer, like so motivated, to have a finish line before the finish line. That's what I'm really confused it's by. It's confusing. I mean, if I said to you that, you know, in the points race on the track, I came into the last corner first and I did the work before that and how dare you come over the top yeah. of me because everybody knows the finish line isn't the finish Like, it's just I, I, complete absolutely. nonsense. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was leading by a shot heading into the 18th hole of the PGA Championship. It, it, but just because you, got, you made up that shot, no, I'd already done all the hard work I, and won. I think it would be very easy, and people are doing this, to quite heavily criticise Demi Vollering as the problem. Now, she ended up winning. Lotta Kopecky, who won last, she got second. But there have been numerous occasions where she has caused some discourse within her team caused discourse within her team and she is the common thread there like come on now she's a very capable rider but I'm not I'm not going to say that she's a real a real pain okay or not a team player but I will say that she doesn't regulate her emotions post-race like she perhaps needs to to be a bit more professional and so that her team trust her yeah because the comments were you know a little bit crappy and unfair the the word she used was absolutely horrendous she instead of coming out and denying it and suggesting that such a horrible insult was a joke because that is just not very classy Mm. I would have really respected if she came out and said I was wrong like I'm so thrilled I won but when I didn't realize I'd won I was devastated in that moment because I've been eyeing off this classic and I made comments that were really unfair and I wasn't very sporting. But that doesn't reflect how I feel about Lotta as a person Mm. or about the team. I would have respected that enormously because you know what? In the heat of the moment, people say things, do things. Yeah. That doesn't define them. But But the nature of this term, as you've described it, uh, heat of the moment doesn't really justify it. No, look, it doesn't justify it. It needs an apology, but I don't understand why they've turned it into a bit of a nothing to see here, bit of a joke. Yeah. And and, uh, once, you know, actually, Demi, it's all good. You've won. Oh, great. Let's have a hug. But even after that, again, I talk about body language. They were clearly separate. Like they weren't, there was no unity there. There was obviously beef happening. But you know what? I don't want, I don't want our daughters... Yeah. Um, you know, we've got three little girls in the house yeah. and a boy as well. Like, don't discount the language, how it affects the boys any differently. But yeah. I don't want our little humans hearing the, that kind of word without an apology. <laughs> Do you know? Like, it, they shouldn't hear the word to start with or they shouldn't think that it's okay to say that. Yeah. But if they ask about it, I want to be able to say... It was wrong and they acknowledge that. I don't want to have to say... Yeah. Ah, a sincere and contrite yeah, apology. Yeah, because they're role models. Of course they are. And this was on. This was overheard on Dutch state. Have I ever broadcast. sounded like so, a mum as much as I am in no, this no, moment? No, no. I, I respect what you're saying because the, when you talk about households, this was like this was. This yeah, was it was out on there. like national television. National TV. Yeah, so it wasn't it, like in prime time as well. Yeah. So I don't know. They're role models, and quite frankly, they get paid to be entertainers and role models. They don't yep. get paid because they're good bike riders. Yeah. Um, and so I think that there's a responsibility that comes with that. You would have had, look, you've spoken about that really diplomatically, and I appreciate that. But a, a little bit of a hint there that maybe Demi's rowing in the opposite direction. Uh, her horse has bolted. <laughs> <laughs> you, blow ups yes. between teammates happen. Um, oh, sure they but do. Behind sure. closed doors often is the best thing. But oh, uh, look this one here. played God, out. God, we've seen it. You know, the NRL has just started here in Australia. The code of football we always talk about, thanks to the Parramatta Eels. Go oh, Eels. Go the Dolphins um, these go, days. Yeah, there's, that's a new <laughs> Queensland team. Yeah. Yes, go the Dolphins. Uh, but I, you know, they had have had some pretty public fights, in-team fights. Absolutely. In round one. Everyone was talking about it. So yep. it's not something that goes unnoticed. It doesn't happen all the time. The general thought around it uh, is that, 
they everybody knows they get emotional. Everybody knows there's so much on it. But that doesn't need to spill out onto the field. Yeah. And if well it does, said. then it's not a problem to apologize for it and own it. It's a problem when they don't think it's a problem. That's exactly it. And the lack of authenticity there, but the, basically because Vollering basically once she went, it's like, oh, th- that was a great, how good, how fun was that finishing so close to my teammates? Like, oh, no, no, I that's know. not at all what you're thinking. No, come on. And you know what? Everybody loves heroes and villains. Yeah. And so you can be a villain if that's authentic you. But yeah, I was going don't to, I was pretend. Reaching for my what were you Vader reaching? Helmet. Oh, like, right. It's out of reach. But yes, you can yeah, be a but, villain. But don't then come out and say, "Oh, I didn't." You know, like mm. own it. Yeah, well said. <laughs> On the Wheelhouse podcast, discussing uh, teammates becoming enemies and then going back to being teammates in the blink of an mm. eye or in the, the blink of a the awarded race decision. Uh, We've never had a blue like that, Kate Bates. Oh, look, not yet. Not yet. 37 episodes in, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned our good mate, Glutzi O'Connor, before. Let's yes. go to Terreno Adriatico. Um, say that 10 times fast. I was doing that in my warm-up before, and it was, it was ba, working ba, ba, well. Ba, ba. Uh, first time there, but uh, not bad. Not bad through the crosswinds. Looking okay. Doing some good bits. Looking as uh, like, a, 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 as you say, a GC contender that he is. I'm going to put real significance onto this for Glutes O'Connor. So you don't put it on Jonas, but you put it on this? Yes. I like it. Yes. And I will now forthwith justify myself. Please do. <laughs> it, to be a true to a contender, you uh-huh. can't just be a climber. And Chris Froome, when he entered, he was a climber. He had to learn how to time trial. He had to learn how to, how to descend. He's sadly now, I think, lost that ability. But he gained it and he did a great job. Yeah. Ben O'Connor is a natural climber. He's an incredible climber and we've seen that with his previous success at the Tour de France. But he does need to fortify his GC ability with time trials um, with skills, which includes definitely descending and bunch general bunch skills, um, but also a really big one, make or break. We've been talking about it as the season started in the Middle East. Crosswinds. Crosswinds. They're massive. It yeah. can make or break a tour. Adam Yates, he got catapulted backwards because of the crosswinds, yeah. lost the tour yeah. at UAE. Clearly hasn't right? seen Days of Thunder. <laughs> Needs a lesson from Tom Cruise, Needs Tom to, and yeah. Nick. <laughs> but... I think that this really shows yeah. that Glutzi, he's he's getting there. He's building that, you know, he's building the foundation of a statue of, of a getting statue. a statue exactly. Because once you become that all rounder and you do it all, He'll that's get a when you get a bronze old, buttock. Yeah, I was going to say copper, but we'll go with bronze. Well, if we can, aff- yeah. We'll if Tom Bonin just gets his legs, <laughs> what does Glutz O'Connor get? I'll well, you know, that. I've suggested I'll leave that it before. There. I, I know, I'm just no, picking it back up. <laughs> I love the way you've you've said that because that all round that all round proficiency on display, yes. and it, it's a good it's a good time to de- demonstrate it. As much as we yeah. have said, you know, they all come together from all over the world. They meet at the tour. That's when it really matters. It's like, but that's the beautiful nuance of cycling. I think is that if you just look at the result sheet, he didn't finish anywhere of yeah. any significance, but he did something very significant and impressive that day in my yeah. mind. Yeah, we love Glutzy. Mm, we When's love he coming Glutzy. on? Oh, soon. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to win get, it this year. I'll get his talent manager to, you know, liaise with our talent manager. I can see it though. It'll be <laughs> him and his team. We'll be sitting at a massive long table. There'll be like twelve lawyers and agents and managers yes. there. There'll be you and I like um <laughs> here are the conditions. You a but what um, do we do? I mean, we need to discuss what happens if he won't go, won't allow us to call him Glutes O'Connor. I think I thought That's we already probably the big cleared thing. that up. No. Okay. Not, well, well, not formally. We'll work it out. Let's trot on on the Wheelhouse <laughs> podcast. Now, can I just pause it up quickly? Because I love a good trophy. <gasps> I love an award statue. I love statues. And I think I've made that really clear. Not as not as much big on leg statues, but anyway. The trophy for the Terrain Adriatico is one of the absolute ripping trophies in existence in human history. Now, the Seamaster trophy is basically a Dutch trident. I've, I'm say Dutch it's trident because Dutch trident. I know I wanted it's to say trident. that though because I've used Dutch <laughs> trident as an expression. Have, now it exists. I've actually written that down on my notes. Dutch <laughs> trident in brackets, <laughs> thinking of you. The Dutch trident being the female Dutch trident in cycling. Yeah, of well, look, it's this is described as a large gilded, gold gilded trident. It is epic. It is epic. Last week, Hank and I. Uh, we're kind of poo-pooing the omelope trophy, okay. which looked like somebody had 
run over a bike wheel with their car, stuck it on a candelabra. Bob's your uncle, here's your trophy. Right. Atrocious. So I'm very pleased to see this work of art. Here. It is a work of art. It I is. have a couple of questions, and I know that you're going <laughs> to poo-poo these questions, but I know it's a coastal race, but it's called the Seamaster Trophy. Yes. It sounds like a sailing trophy. Or it's like oh. an international scuba diving championship. Scuba, really? It's named Does after Neptune, exist? the god of the sea. It is. It's How a coastal very godly. trophy. A, the name of a Roman god and this beautiful gilded trident. Yeah. It's beautiful. Okay. Fish but, out of water, perhaps. But they're, not, they're not like riding. They're, ra- they're racing along the coast. That's the point. Sure. To ra- they're racing along the Adriatic Sea. Yeah, it's okay. It's beautiful. Look, I'll go with it because you know? it is a spectacular piece yeah. of. Gold, gilded, whatever you call it. It's fantastic. Hardware. It's a great bit of know. hardware. It's great. Don't use it as a fork. You could if you were desperate, but it would need to be a pretty big steak. That would have to be an enormous steak. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. Now, let's let's stay there for a second. Thank you for explaining that. I'm, <laughs> I'm on board. One of your most beloved, cherished, treasured events, the team time trial. Ugh. Has, <laughs> in a slightly different <laughs> shape and size, but... You, you still don't like it, do Well, you? I, I dislike it so much I didn't even bother writing notes about it, Joel. And <laughs> so when gonna, you said that, I was like, riff. what's he talking about? <laughs> um, they changed format of it this year. And yeah. so previously the time for the team was taken, stick with me here, Joel, off the fourth rider across the line. So you needed to finish as a team. Uh-huh. and Oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And if you got dropped in fifth or sixth or seventh, you got your own time. But the top four, the time stopped on the fourth rider okay. and you all got it. They've changed that up. So now the riders get their actual times, right? So now there's all these, there was speculation about all these crazy tactics where the teams would essentially act as a giant lead out and launching pad for their GC rider to get those one or two second advantage yes. Ugh, Don't didn't, like it. Didn't really play out like that. I think okay. it was a little bit of a nothing to see here. And once again, my least favourite event, which I know is controversial. There's a lot of people who would fight me on that. Yeah. Um, even within our team. Yeah. Uh, Merksy, very big fan. He loves it. Of, he loves of it. The team You're not trial. horsing around. You cannot <laughs> stand the triple team. No, team. I really can't. Um, You've but, said it you know, so many. Yeah. It's not. It's not the main event. Okay. It's not the showpiece. It's not. I what think, and I see. no, it is not. Okay, you uh, you've gone from one of your least favourites. Can I pivot now to Ooh. your all time favourite? Maybe not all time, but your current favourite, Wout Van Aert. Um, there, um, looking looking okay after all. It's had a bit of a an incident with uh, Tommy P in the form of a collision. But I liked it. They had a collision, got up, shook mm. it off, and said, "Ah, it's all good." He, he just, ran into him. Hard, you know. Tried to go through a gap that wasn't there. Wasn't ran there. into him. Oh, I think it's. Well, I mean, crashes happen all the time, but I do. Not like to see any athletes crash, but of not. when they do, I like to see that they shake hands afterwards. Crash with grace. And there is a very big difference, Joel, having a crash that is just crashes happen yeah. versus having a crash because somebody was riding dangerously or having a crash because the conditions were dangerous. Yeah. They're very different mindset when you get up off the ground and how you feel. Toward so, your other rider. And toward- oh, I, toward... The other rider toward the race, toward okay. everything, you know. But crashes do happen and no big. it doesn't have to be a big deal. Mm-hmm. But it brings more authenticity to when Wout would then, or Tommy P, feathers. Feathers. Not piddles. I'm so glad you like that. Feathers, yes. We're going with that. <laughs> Where feathers would at some other stage say, this guy brought me down and it's not okay. Yeah. We know it's genuine because when crashes just happen by accident, he doesn't fire up. Well, yeah, you know. and, and you, but but we do see heat. We see <laughs> Demi following. We see uh, slightly heated exchanges from time to time. That can happen after. Oh yeah, and it, look, people have been kicked out of many examples of riders kicked out of races for dangerous riding. Yeah, you know, um, Peter Sagan, Mark Renshaw. Yeah, um, a wayward headbutt. Of course, Sargent I don't know how been. Robbie McEwen didn't get booted out. He was great with his with his headbutts. Yeah. Won him a lot of races. Did you ever execute a say. headbutt? No. Did you ever w- receive a yes, headbutt? Yes, a oh, lot. Dear. And I did not like it. Wow. I was so vocal about it. Probably in my generation, the most vocal of any rider about 
dangerous riding. Okay. And and since we were talking about horses earlier, Joel, yeah, the worst thing I've ever seen in a race crash related was a Brazilian rider unclip her foot and horse kick another no. rider clear off her bike. Wow. And I was a couple of wheels back and I was in absolute did anybody else see that? Yeah. A lot of people saw it. She got kicked out of the race. Oh. And, you know, from then on was known as the horse kicker. Would you say she was like act like hoofing and she, hoofing yeah, with yes, rage? Yes, she was wow. hoofing with rage. Actually, Merksy, all this horse theming, do you reckon we could play a bit of Daryl Braithwaite uh, horses under this horse chat, mate? Copyright issues, Joel. We can't do that. Okay. Mm. Kate, can you sing for us? That's the way it's going to be, little darling. Oh, my God. We'll go riding on the horses. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that was really good. Oh, and it it allows me to bring up Harry Styles again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thanks for your two cents there, Merksy. Thanks, Merksy. Look, I I, I love dodging copyright, so that's how we have to do it. That's how we have to do it. But let's, let's talk about hairy moments because... There's been a few in the <laughs> show so Harry far. From Harry to Harry. I'm with you. I'm Let's, with you. I want to go to the a Harry moment. It's not a moment as much as a, a pair of legs. Now, Primoz Ooh, Roglic, yes. we love him. I, I, a pair of hairy legs. One of the first legs. nicknames that I, that I coined and I really love is Sticky Tape Man for Prim. because he, Harry, Perry, Sticky Tape Harry, Man. Harry, Perry, Sticky, <laughs> sticky Tape, Primoz <laughs> Roglic gets up every time, gets knocked down, gets back up. He's one of the most tenacious, grittiest riders that I think exists, and yes. I, I applaud him for that. He's looked okay. I'd describe his riding style as a bit hairy, but it's not. Oh, hang on, no, no, no that's not his riding style. It's his it's legs. Him. <laughs> What's the go with the hairy legs? He's refusing to get out the old Mark III razor and shave well, them the Simon Peggs. He, <laughs> have a nice little rhyming pun there. Uh, look, that's his. he. Uh, he's made his comeback a little early, Joel. Mm-hmm. So he, we haven't seen him for four months. He got a. Um, big shoulder operation, including a big shoulder gra- a big bone graft on his shoulder. Oh, um, to that actually, might, I don't even have it injured. That made my shoulder well, hurt hearing that. Turns out, sticky tape doesn't always work. The <laughs> gaffer tape. He needed a bit of reinforcement there, yeah. uh, and he planned to start his season a little bit later. But he was like, oh, "I've been at altitude. I'm starting to feel fit again. Uh-huh. Why not give it a go?" So. He's turned up to Adriatico and he's got hairy legs and it's not something that you see often in the professional peloton. And it's not just for it's not just for vanity reasons, but that definitely plays into it, I gotta say. A little bit? Oh, definitely, right? Because they oil up their legs, they look a bit musclier and better in photos. Like there's a vanity aspect uh-huh. to it. Yeah. Okay. However, um it it's also if you fall off, just to clarify, because you haven't shaved your legs yet, right? Not for this sport, no. Yet. I used to shave them for football. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yet is the word I use. Yeah. Um, it, shaving means that if you do fall off, you can get better wound care. You don't lose as much skin. Um, and massage as well okay. is, the other, yeah. is the other one to yeah. make sure that massage can be um, performed smoothly. Hmm, that sounds a little bit dodgy. Are you, are you saying that I don't massage mean it to sound dodgy. couldn't be performed smoothly? Oh, look, I don't think it would be as pleasant on an these experience numbers? on okay. your hairy pins Got as some... it would be if you <laughs> defluffed them. Uh, but More so hair <laughs> than the floor of a salon there. Well, so he's turned up with hairy legs and people have noticed and yeah. it's become a bit of a joke. But then he wins and he comes out and says, now I'm going to shave my legs because I had no intention of shaving them until the first win of the I season. How I love the that? superstitious, like... When you speak about the vanity and the ego involved as well, so that's a real personal challenge that he's given himself. It is. I mean, like... I, I will note that he has also missed a few spots on his face <laughs> uh, that he could address. He did, but um, I, I, I kind of there's, there's also tape man. A, a manicured element to his goatee and his face, where it's like if you oh. just applied half of that love to your legs, you'd have. I you know. I feel about goatees. Fairly similarly to how I feel about Team Star Team Time Trials. Trials. Not a fan. Okay. Let's, <laughs> but no, uh, now he's got beautifully shaven legs. Good. I, it's, uh, it, I'm so happy to see him back because I'm so used to seeing him busted, like uniform torn, the lycra just mm. every in shreds. It would bring me joy to and see him as the face of like um, Gillette <laughs> or there something you go. like that. I, you, you, it's a sliding doors thing though because we, we, we talk about the Pog era and just before mm. the Pog era was very nearly... Primoz. We saw him mm. doing what he was well, doing. Well, he's not even riding the tour this year. He's yeah. going 
It's going massive. for the Giro. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's a Grand Tour winner. I reckon he could probably win the Giro could too. Could do it. Although the Italians will be mortified if he turns up with even a skerrick of fluff on the I think there's a, the there's a hairband in Italy. I think so. All, all over. He'll get waxed at the border. Let's stay <laughs> Let's stay on legs. There is a line um, I never thought I would say. I love Staying the body parts legs. we're covering Evans. today because my, <laughs> my favourite Frenchman, um, another, uh, you know, very inspirational writer by the name of Julian Alaphilippe, he's, he's done some incredible things in the sport and won, and won over a lot of fans. And as a fan, you like to go and see your favourite athletes and if you get the chance to meet them, that's great. Oh, we've got plenty of super fans out the front of the studio right now, Joel. Gathering, yes, clamouring. the police have been called. They no. have, <laughs> yes. And that's because I parked in a clearing, clear way. But anyway, the, the next step for that fandom is I might buy a poster. I might buy a, a biography. I might buy a documentary. They a jersey. You. Sure. Let's go a step further. I might take my calf muscle... And turn it into a giant portrait of and Julian Alaphilippe, the an Lulu homage. make. An homage to Lulu. It's what do you think of this? Uh, oh, Have oh. a look on our social media, by the way. This uh, a super fan has basically had a, a portrait of Julian Alaphilippe tattooed, and it goes from his ankle to just beneath his knee. Uh, it's very detailed. It's I mean, detailed. like Specialized have got some sponsorship recognition there. Yeah. Um, they they've gone pretty full on. Oh, it, it's look, it's not my style. It's not. It's Far I don't think it's for me to judge somebody. I don't think it's Lulu's style. But I don't. If yeah. You see the photo. He looks just a tiny bit creeped out. Well, it's creepy because this interaction happened. I understand where this fan was pretty much camping out in the lobby of the hotel. For, for days? Waiting. <laughs> well, that's unclear. Waiting for Lulu to come down. Wow. Look, wow. Katie has tattoos. Ha- I, okay. Thanks, Merxie. Yeah, oh. all right. All right we're, we're, I don't have a tattoo of this, though. You don't have a wout tattoo? No, I don't have a wout tattoo. Okay, promise? I promise I okay. don't have a wout well, tattoo. You wouldn't wait in the hotel lobby for three days and say, Oh, wow! No, I've got, I've got the Olympic rings, which... By the way, when I went to the Olympics, I was the only one on the team that didn't have them yet. So, oh well, that's you like, know, that's, I was just conforming. That's a, very, a fair and reasonable tattoo <laughs> yes. as an Olympian but it's, to get. Show us. It's cheeky. Can we see it? No, it's cheeky of uh, Merxy to give it away because both of my tattoos uh, are in places that you would not ordinarily see. You're not going to reveal them. So on that's the like video. inside, okay. inside a trading right there, Merxy. You're going to get pinged for that. How does Merxy know about them? I thought Merxy was just <laughs> our producer. Indeed, yes, yes, yes. Um, I also have a uh, a Taurus on my back, Joel. Okay. Because I'm not know, afraid to show mine. Every 18 year old needs their star sign Darth tattooed Vader. on them, and you've got Darth Vader. I got Darth Vader. And Merxy has told us, promised us that if he, uh, if we get a thousand listeners per. Um, like per hour yeah. in the first few hours when we roll this show out, he is going to get a large gilded trident tattooed on his leg. On his leg? Yep. From ankle Neptune, to, to knee? Roman god of sea. Yep. yep. I didn't say on my leg. Oh. oh, your other leg. Stop it. Oh, my oh. God. Okay. Wow. That, they, gee, that got right. interesting. Is there, something, uh, is there something else on our... I'm going to hold you to that. Maxine, now let's... Uh, we, we, on my uh, arm. Oh. <laughs> it's like a baby's arm holding an apple. Okay. Oh, my let's God. Let's move on. You so went there. I oh. did. Now, we spoke about a bee's dick moment the oh. other week. Now, for those... those sorry for the language, but <laughs> nice a bee's segue. dick being a very close finish. A <laughs> yes. very, very close. Not it a is. he's. Dick in it. That's yes. what that means. Now, it's very good Australianism. It is very much yeah. so. I'd like to apply it again because it's happened again to involving an Australian, so it's even more relevant. Now Caleb Ewan, whew, he's had a he's had a trot, hasn't he? He's had a trot <laughs> he's, he's at the GP Monsieur. A, a, a controversial time for him. Now I, I just want to draw attention to this photo finish uh, because <laughs> the reality of it is, it's one of the worst quality photo finish <laughs> photos. You'll ever see. Check it out yes. on our social media. It looks like it was shot in like nineteen twelve. It it is. It actually looks like an abstract. That's how um, low quality the picture is. Yeah. And given the technology that exists, there is absolutely no excuse for them not having better technology uh, to figure out photo finishes. Um, Caleb thought he won. I he tweeted think about I won. it. Boom. Kind of think I won. Yeah. Thoughts. 
I like that. That's a bit sassy. Thoughts? Question Every, everyone mark. else. But then people are like, you know what? Here's another angle. Caleb. Yeah. You effing did win. Yes. And, and we fans see. have sent in photos um, where Caleb does clearly win. Now, when we say clearly, I'm not talking about like half a bike or a, you know, even half a wheel. We're talking more like a tyre, but it is yeah. a clear show that he did actually A well-endowed B. Indeed. Mm. Uh, you've got a bit of spice today, A well-endowed B. Goodness. He's won by a buzz. Now, I think that the big issue here is that we are seeing more and more photo finishes, mm. right? And really controversially tight ones. And to our grave disappointment, the UCI have not yet enacted the rule, the one kilometre race-off rule. Uh-huh. So help me if they don't do that at least once this season for the fans. Think of the fans. We but read the guide. We Exactly. Yeah. We know the rules. Yeah. But why on earth don't they have better technology? How on yeah. earth can a UCI sanctioned race exist with a photo finish technology that is so far below any it's, it's crazy. It's, appropriate yeah. standards? And it's not just a race victory. You might think, well, he's won stages of the Tour de France. Like... Does it really matter that much? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Of and if for no does. other reason, the teams are literally relegated, as Lotto Destiny have been, yeah. for points, and he's just lost points yep. because of a shoddy camera and what people were also saying was a crooked finish line. Yep. Come on now. It's, a, it's like, like an old school Panavision. Better like, sort standards. Of, it's like a yeah. school carnival run by volunteers. I, Shout I'm, out I'm to all the volunteers who run the school carnivals. Yeah, <laughs> like on the side going, stop it, run. <laughs> you know those old sort yes. of bulb exploding cameras? That's kind of what they're using. And that's, I know. that's crazy. And Lotto Destiny, to their, to their credit, they haven't done any kind of formal protest, but they have issued a statement saying, can you just show us how you, how you reached that conclusion? Yes. Can you show us how you've proven that Caleb has lost this race, despite there being photos suggesting, as you say, there's a well-endowed B between him um, and Jervin Tyson. I think and they I, handled it well. I, I, mean, I, I like that. It's dignified. And I, lo- I like Caleb Sass putting it out and thoughts. And do you know, I will also say that people writing back to Caleb and saying, yeah, you definitely won, that will go a long way to making Caleb feel yeah. confident and comfortable. That's great, you know. Vindicated, so, and vindicated. It probably does his best work when he's feeling vindicated because he's had a. He feels like he's had shots fired at him for the last. We would, we would months. like here at the wheelhouse. We would like to see Caleb back on that winner's podium. We would. You're welcome into the bunker anytime, sir. Yes. We salute you, and uh, well done for your <laughs> win. Well done for your win. Yes, in Monster. congratulations. Let me say that. Okay, now let's go to some more shit canning because I love it now. Tom Bonin. Now, this is great because Whoa. we all know how good Pog is. As I say, Pog pack manning the peloton. Uh, and Bonin's like, you know what? You know what, pal? I'm, I'm going to, you know, if you were on a better bike, you'd be even more lethal. It's Doesn't <laughs> like it. I'm I'm laughing not because of what you're saying, Joel, although there's comedy to that, but because Merxy's put up a graphic in the studio yeah. of a Colnago with an emoji turtle on the top of it and it's very it's very clever <laughs> and it's very yes, funny. Yeah. Um, well done. Nice and Maxie. also Tom Bonin looking exceptionally scary and also having forgotten to shave an area of his face um, his known face looks as a like goatee. Roglic's legs. Terrible. Yeah. Anywho. He actually looks like a hitman. He, like, do, he, he does really a little bit. Intimidating. Well he's certainly taken a hit out on Conargo here. Hasn't he? he has suggested that seconds he is losing because of the bike. Yep. He's totally shit-canned uh, Colnago as a bike brand. I think it's a good reminder personally, Joel, for you and I. He made these comments on a podcast. They've now gone global. I'm now wondering what part of today's conversation will go global. Uh-huh. But, you know, I stand by what I what I say, Yep. I think. Yep. I'll have to... <laughs> Re-listen Probably you singing Braithwaite, to be fair, oh, would be totally. the bit I'd, I'd take. Um, but I think that what he kind of overlooks here, uh-huh. I'll, I'll justify his comments in a small way and say traditionally Colnago have been the most beautiful and expensive bikes, but not the highest performance. So my father had a beautiful uh, black Colnago that still um, my mother can't part ways with. It's still sitting in the shed at home. Mm. I hate it. She said, would you like, you know, this beautiful bike of, of your father's as a memory? And I said, no, thank you. Like I just, it's not my style. It is pretty, but, 
you know, such a traditional bike. Now that said, Colnago aren't that company anymore. And the fact that you've got a team like UAE riding on them and a rider like Pogaccia who takes extreme attention yeah. to everything, they would not ride they simply would not ride bikes that were not up to scratch. That's my thing. They would not. And yeah. they don't have to because they can ride whatever bike they want. Mm -hmm. And even if the bike brands don't want to sponsor them, which I don't think that would be a hard decision for a bike brand to want Pogaccia riding their bikes. Yeah. They're not short of a few quid. They could they can afford to have the very best of the very best. And I think that Colnago have worked really hard to do that yeah. and provide the equipment. And I mean like our, you know, good friends at Champ Sis who do per se, per se are the clothing partner uh, of UAE and they've told us and we've talked about the incredible amount of research and development that has gone into the fabrics that these guys wear, yeah. right? It's incongruous to think that they're putting all this detail and attention into the fabrics yeah. that they wear, but they're riding a bike that isn't up to scratch. Isn't completely it just doesn't, at its, yeah. So his comments, like I get that his perception of Colnago's is that they're not one of the highest performing bikes. I would have that perception too, to be honest. But when you apply that to UAE and the research that they've done around it and development, it doesn't match. Well, Pog's Pog, and we often say it seems like he's nonchalant and doesn't care, but as you oh, say, he he's a student of the sport. He, he absolutely is. does care. He's been with them his whole career. He won his first tour. Their first tour win as well was his first. They're on a journey together. What I love about it mm. is Colin Nago's like, you know what, Bonin? You know what, Bonesy? <laughs> If you want to make bones about this, why don't you come down and have a have a have a toddle on the bike yourself? Yes. See how you go. Do you think that's what he was angling for the whole time? Maybe he just wants Maybe. to have a go. He's I, like, in, I, the replica was too expensive. I just, <laughs> I'd love to have a go at one. He's very influential in in Belgium, and you know I think the comments date him a little bit because it is something that was talked about ten years ago. Um, yeah. Certainly, Colnago, Pinarello, they were the beautiful and expensive bikes, but they weren't the highest performance. But that's changed. And, you know, I think maybe Tommy Boy needs to do some reading. Yep. Well, that, him and Dirk DeWolf, because Dirk DeWolf also, also had a little bit, he's retired now, a little bit to say about mm. the Col, doesn't like the Colnago, maybe secretly actually loves the Colnago and is using a bit of reverse psychology. Yes, to trying get to get a, their hands get in the on saddle. one. Nah. We'll see. But look, there's a reason uh, that e even if it could be two kilometres an hour faster, there's a reason that Pog is on that bike and will probably be for his career. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think the bike's up to scratch. Kate Bates, this has been so much fun. It always is an absolute treat to come into the bunker. But can I just tell you, I'm actually not going to be here next week. I know we should talk about this off mic, but I just thought oh. I'd let you know on mic. I'm heading to Los Angeles. Uh, I'm going for a trip to the USA uh, because there's some open trials um, to be part of the US track team, basically. And <laughs> I, I might end up trotting out at the Olympics. I literally the thought you were going to tell me you were you know, following Harry Styles to the US for a concert. Secretly, maybe that as well. <laughs> uh, I'm glad. No, I'm glad we're talking about this. The US um, US cycling mm. have put out essentially talent ID. Now, in sport, we call it talent identification. In the music entertainment world, they call it, you know, the voice, idol, America's got talent. Yep. I think they could have been a bit snappier with the title of this. but <laughs> <laughs> They took their creative from the USI's, uh, UCI's rule book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ba -bomb. Uh, but, they're, yeah, they're getting uh, kids in. The, the aim of the project and the talent ID is to get people in, kids really, uh, who don't normally have access to cycling, who may come from underrepresented groups. Um, there is a very large African-American population in Los Angeles. Yep. A lot of them live in lower socioeconomic conditions and they don't have the same access um, to sport and especially cycling that some other kids do. They're trying to get them in on bikes. I think that's fantastic. So they're doing like a, a jump test, a vertical jump test, uh, and then also a 30 second power test uh, on Great. the bike. Great. And just those two markers will allow them to then, you know, narrow it down to finalists. Yep. And then I am just really bummed that there's been no news of a documentary about it because this would be good television. I love, by the way, secret, not so secret lover of Australian Idol. So I love these concepts. Okay. I think this would be a cracker. What would you call it? Can we not just call it America's Got Talent? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Maxie's already spoken about copyright issues. I don't know. Sorry. I feel like that might be a problem. Okay. I love well, it though, but you, you've said it because like there are beautiful pathways established here in Australia, in the US and 
that kind of thing, but they still miss a lot of would be. And it, it's the sort of thing that could unearth a future complete, like a generational talent that hasn't had the opportunities. Yes. Well, to, we have you know, not had Indigenous First Nation representation from Australia at the yeah. Olympics in cycling. Mm. I would love to see that. That should change. I would love to see uh, that. And I would change. love to yeah. see the opportunity afforded to uh, communities that don't have access to yeah. it. Yep. We've seen it in other sports. I always trot on about other sports, but the NBL is a great <laughs> example. To the end, trot on. Trot on. But pathways being opened up. I'm going to use basketball as the best example of that at the moment in Australia. Rugby league, of course, and the, the footy codes are good, but basketball has done a really good job of getting to remote communities and, and, and offering opportunities for kids that don't have the resources to, to pursue their dreams to get those opportunities. And we're seeing that come to fruition yes. as far away as the NBA as well. I'm so looking forward to it. The, the best ever cyclist in American history is a fellow by the name of Major Taylor, yep. um, an African-American sprint cyclist yep. who was the world's best. I, I'd love to see this project kind of come full circle and, and take cycling back to that community. A note here for Oz Cycling, perhaps? Definite note. Yeah. Can you say that in your next board meeting? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, first I'd need to get appointed to the board, but we can we can work on that. Details. One thing at a time. Details, Kate. <laughs> honestly. Uh, this is the Wheelhouse Podcast. I, I've really enjoyed today. Thank you for everything you always bring to the table. Uh, massive. Thank you, John. And if you can see the table, that's, that is a table, lot. It's yes. a lot. Uh, shout out to Merxy, as always, and our friends. Uh, Grow Getters Group, Course Champion System, PSA, and listener. Everyone that listens and contributes, please tell your friends because it's a lot of fun here in the bunker. It is, and uh, thank you to River City Studios for um, bunkering up for That's us. That's a every tattoo week. I'd consider. I would almost RCS. get the River City Whoa. Studios logo on my calf muscle. Okay. We go, can Mercy. talk about that yeah. on off air. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for, your for joining us. See you next time. <laughs> The Wheelhouse is produced at River City Studios for Listener and proudly supported by Champion System, Per Se and the Grow Getters Group. Our executive producer is Luke Merksey-Mears and the show is written and hosted by Joel Spreadborough and me, Kate Bates.